So yeah, you are good to. Yeah. Pardon? I can begin. It's okay. Yeah, it's, it's, you're good to go. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, namaste, everyone. Uh, good evening. My name is uh, Sebastian Poli. I'm a Microsoft MVP and a CTO for uh, a European IT company called Aero, quite a small one in comparison with uh, Indians one. And uh, I'm working on document management, SharePoint project, Office 365 projects, uh, and compliance topics since something like 15 years. And uh, today I will uh, share you um, the good practice and all the features and license information to do uh, personal on confidential or sensitive uh, information management in Microsoft 365. Okay, just a uh, few few words. I mean, uh, a big thank you for the the organizer team. I mean, all the organizers. Thank you very much. And also a big thank you for uh, sponsors. I mean, without them, we shouldn't be able to. Uh, uh, we, we couldn't organize such an event. So thank you, everyone. A little disclaimer also. Uh, I will give you information on my understanding of uh, Indian regulation because I had a look on the Indian regulation. I know the European one, GDPR, but uh, I also had a look on uh, on the Indian one. So I will talk a little bit about it. But uh, if you want to be sure about something regarding uh, Indian uh, regulation, please check with your uh, local uh, legal uh, department. And I will also talk about uh, Microsoft for licensing because when we talk about security management and the compliance feature, it's always about uh, licensing. I will give you information about that on based on my understanding, but it may change next week because um, we will have um, uh, Ignite sessions. And uh, even if when you think you're sure about something about licensing with Microsoft, you can always dis discover something new though. So, I mean, I will give you the information on based on my understanding, but uh, please always check with your uh, Microsoft licensing contact if you want to be sure about something. But um, I'm quite sure, I'm 99% sure about what I am giving you here. So the topic, we will talk about security. Okay, the introduction is about security. Why? Because we are having more and more uh, security issues in uh, in the world, not because we have more bugs, but because simply we have more and more hackers. Okay, and um, and the cost of a data breach uh, is increasing nearly every year. Okay, when in a, an average data breach is something like between three and four million dollars. Uh, cost for a company, so it's uh, it's an horrible experience. I don't know if anyone here has already experienced uh, a data leak in his company, but it's really something you don't want to uh, to to have. Okay, and now it's more and more difficult. Why? Because I mean the number of security attacks increase. Okay, uh, and I had few figures about. Uh, on a quarter to on quarter comparison, uh, in India it seems that uh, the number of attack has been multiplied by uh, multiplied by three. Okay, so you have more and more attacks. And the bad news is you also have more and more constraints on the legal part. I mean, in Europe we have something called GDPR, and uh, but in India you also have your own regulation. And the bad news is. Uh, you may have to pay for the pirates who will attack your IT system, and you, if you don't do, uh, if you don't act uh, properly uh, regarding the law, you may have to pay uh, much more uh, to the to the court. Okay, for instance, British Airways. I think it was at the beginning of the year or last year, paid a bill something like more than two hundred million dollars. Just because they were uh, they were attacked and they didn't disclose uh, the issue to the customers. Okay, so uh, this is typically the kind of regulation we have, like GDPR. 
but you also have your own. OK, so I mean, this is the main topic we talk about. And um, so let's dig a little bit and see what when we are talking about personal data, what are we talking about? In fact, uh, more and more countries are having a specific regulation for personal data management. In India, as far as I understand, you have something like uh, called PDPB, Personal Data Protection Bill, which is quite new. And as I understand it, I read it, uh, it's quite close from GDPR, which is from Europe. And um, you have more or less the same kind of uh, fines. Uh, and uh, it, it seems a little bit more. Uh, it seems a little bit harder in India because you also you may have criminal penalties, um, and you can find the same kind of regulation now in California, for instance. You don't have such regulation at the federal level in US, but you may find uh, such regulation also uh, in Singapore, for instance, or in Malaysia. As far as I know, they have exactly the same kind of regulation. Okay, so every country country is having now a new regulation for personal data management. Each country is having more or less um, the same, but with little differences at the, every time. But the way you will manage it in um, Microsoft 365 is more or less every time the same. Okay, uh, from my experience right now. So if you look at PDPB. Uh, what they called uh, personal data means data about or relating to a natural person who is directly or indirectly identifiable. This one is quite important. Directly or indirectly identifiable. So it means that if I don't have the name, but I have your uh, email address or I have your age and uh, personal physical address, we can consider it as being uh, a personal data, even if I don't have your name. Okay, uh, having regards to any characteristic, trait, attribute, or any other feature of the identity of such a natural person, whether online or offline, or any combination of such features with any other information, and shall include any inference drawn from such data from the purpose of profiling. Okay, so what does it mean? Such a complex sentence. It means that, as I said, if you have the name, the email, or the location or if you have any banking or financial data, even IP address are considered as being, uh, according to GDPR, as are considered as being a, a personal data. If you have any information about political orientation, religion, caste, uh, ethnical data, sexual orientation, or if you have uh, medical information like genetic data or, uh, or disease or medical file, I mean, all those are consider, considered as uh, personal data, and there are typically the kind of data we are talking about today. Okay, and um, so we are talking about those personal data in Office 365. So if you go to Microsoft Cloud, Microsoft will be your data subcontractor. And as your data subcontractor, I mean, the good news is um, you will see a difference between uh, um, the responsibility if you have an on-premise on -premise infrastructure and a software as a service in infrastructure. And I mean that if you have Exchange or SharePoint on-premise, you, you are fully responsible for everything from the physical security infrastructure and so on and network and so on. If you use Office 365, this is uh, the, the column on the right. You will have, uh, I mean, a, a part of the responsibility will be on Microsoft shoulders. Okay, those are the, those responsibility, application, network, uh, infrastructure. Why? Because you can't do anything about that. I mean, it's only Microsoft who, who control those uh, those layers. But uh, it's also this diagram also shows that. Um, you will have a responsibility on your side. And it's not because Microsoft is GDPR and maybe tomorrow P PDPB uh, compliant. It doesn't mean that uh, it's okay for you, you have nothing to do. You have actions on your side, and this is typically the kind of action I will detail uh, just after, okay? Just a little technical point. Um, I don't know if everyone is really fluent about Office 365, 
and the architecture of S365, but just you have to understand that when we talk about Teams Planner or Yammer, it's always based on an Office 365 group. And when we talk about OneDrive or an Office 365 group, every document are stored in SharePoint. Even if you don't see SharePoint, it's SharePoint on the background. And every email is always stored in Exchange. So I will talk a lot during this session about SharePoint and Exchange. It's because, in fact, technically, it's always uh, concerning SharePoint and Exchange and all the features Microsoft has, uh, has created are mainly on SharePoint and Exchange. The only uh, kind of content which is not in SharePoint and Exchange may be uh, Teams messages or Yammer messages. And in fact, uh, by now, it was not true last year, but by now, um, those uh, features like Teams and Yammer uh, messages are also concerned by compliance uh, features. Okay. So this is um, the, the big picture. And now let's dig a little bit inside the company's obligations. Okay. According to PDPB and my understanding of PDPB, you have several, as a company, you have several obligations. I shouldn't process personal data. And if I do so, I should have a limitation on the purpose of those data. I shouldn't collect more than I should, uh, I'm supposed to collect. I should always inform my end user about the data I'm, uh, I'm collecting and processing. I need to ensure that those data are the good ones. I need also to identify those data, by, uh, by the way. I need to um, keep and uh, have a retention of those data as little as minimum. So it means that uh, once I don't need the, the data anymore, I should delete those data. And um, I should, I have to be uh, an accountability of data feature server to put this one. And consent necessary for processing of personal data, it means that every time I collect data, I should have the content from a hand user. Okay. So now let's see in detail those ones, those obligations, and understand how we can answer those obligations with Microsoft 365. Uh, someone has a microphone open. Can we ask to close their microphone. Hopla. I think we're good now. Sorry. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, so I was talking about the requirement, and now we are talking about the requirement for the consent from your hand user. As I said just before, every time you collect data, you should have an explicit content uh, consent, sorry, explicit consent from your hand user. This is here the detail uh, I found in PDPB. And how can we do it using Microsoft 365? What we can do in Microsoft 365 for, I mean, if you collect data from your employees, this one, there is no answer in Microsoft 365. Why? Because the easy, easiest way to do it is probably to add an amendment in uh, in the contract you have with your employees. So not a big deal, okay? But if you open a part of your Office 365 tenant to uh, customers or to suppliers or to partners, anyone who is not part of your company, and if you expect them uh, to share their personal data with your company, you should get their consent about the data you will collect and also what you will do about those data. So it's quite a complex topic. Uh, typically, you need a, a document written by your uh, legal department and you need uh, all those end users to sign this document. Okay. So what we can do using Microsoft 365 is make that um, the first time your end user will connect to your tenant, the first screen will, they will show is something like what you can see on the left part. Okay, they will have a prompt 
and is a, it will recur then to read uh, your uh, your your document, which can be your official time of use, for instance. And um, you need then to read to scroll the whole document and to click on accept to be sure that okay they have read the, the um, your um, um, your explanation about what you will do with their data and uh, how you will store them and so on. Okay, so it's quite easy to use as you can see. And I mean, um, however your end user connect, it can be based on. Um, I mean, it's a link, you sh a direct link to a document or link to a SharePoint page or link to a Teams or whatever. First time they will connect, what they will see, it's this screen and they have to scroll the document the first time and accept the document. How do we do something like that? The bad news for that is it's not uh, a free feature in Office 365. You need absolutely Azure ADP1 to do so, okay? Azure DP1, if you don't know this uh, license, it's something which is part from uh, Microsoft 365 Business Premium and uh, every Microsoft 365 uh, enterprise government or uh, education license. But for instance, if you just have Office 365 E3, you don't have Azure DP1. You can buy it separately. But uh, just ensure you have Azure IP1 to be able to do what you see right now on the screen. How to set it up? You need to go on Azure AD Active Directory Admin Center. You go on Azure AD Conditional Access, Term of Use, New Terms, and you will have this simple screen like this one. You type a name and so on. You just upload a PDF, okay, which contains all the text you want the end user to read. And uh, you can uh, ask the end user to scroll the whole document and so on. And you can set up the policy to apply only for your external users, for instance, or to apply only for a particular uh, security group of users. Okay, and you click on, you click on create and that's all. No more than that, okay. So it's quite easy to, to do, just you need to ensure that you have the proper uh, Azure IDP1 license for each of your end users. Okay, um, so this one, quite easy to, uh, to implement, no development, nothing like that. Second topic, the quality of personal data processed. So if you want to have a good quality of new data on your data, you need to ensure, in fact, that um, your, uh, you know which personal data you store and you need to know where so those personal data or confidential data uh, are stored. And to do so, we have something beautiful called sensitivity labels in Office 365. It doesn't exist in, uh, in uh, on-premise versions of uh, Microsoft products but you have something quite similar called uh, uh, right management system in, uh, uh, in Active Directory. But when we are talking about sensitive levels, it's something which only exists in Office 365. And in fact, in every big company, you have this kind of classification for data, like it's uh, public, it's internal, it's restricted, it's confidential, it's highly confidential, and so on and so on. In fact, what you can do in Office 365 is you can, you can implement those same level of confidentiality uh, in your tenant. And it's something that you will be able to set, it, uh, to set up at tenant level. We, you will create labels, sensitivity labels. And doing so, it means that if you create those labels, your hand users will see those labels appear in Excel or Word or any Office product, PowerPoint or whatever, and uh, directly from the Home tab, they will be able to select the proper level of uh, sensitivity for the data, okay? So it's something which by default, it's manual. We will see after that we can do something automatic about that. And uh, as I said, it's for all products. So it's for all documents, whether they are in SharePoint or Teams, it also works in Office Web Apps, of course, in OneDrive, and it also works for emails in uh, Exchange. 
Outlook. Okay. To use this kind of feature, you need absolutely the information protection Office 365 uh, license, which is part from Office 365 E3. If you only have Office 365 E1, you won't be able to create labels. Okay. And when you create your labels, what does it do when I, uh, I tag a document uh, as being confidential, for instance? In fact, you can uh, set up each label to have different behavior. So this behavior, for instance, is you can uh, encrypt the files. And doing so, it means that the, if the file go out the company, if you uh, stole, if you steal the, the file, uh, or if you get the file on a USB uh, key, for instance, and you give it to uh, someone who is not part of the company. If this person tries to open the document from uh, their computer, uh, they won't be able to do so. Why? Because the first thing that uh, Word, for instance, will try to do opening the document is to get the uh, the encryption encry encryption key, sorry, uh, from uh, the Active Directory. And this encryption key is uh, only available from the person who are part of uh, your Active Directory. In fact, those uh, keys are managed by the Azure Active Directory, and you can set up properly which person are uh, who are uh, who are the one who can open confidential document and who are the one who cannot open those uh, those document. Okay, so I mean, this is the main feature, the main powerful feature. It's doing so, you will really encrypt the file. It's quite a powerful feature, and I will explain a little bit how it works just after. And doing so, you can also restrict the permissions inside the file. You can block copy paste, you can uh, block screenshot, you can block uh, print for emails, you can block forward, and so on and so on. You can also inside, uh, include watermarking inside the, um, uh, the Word documents. And if you have, because I mean, everything I just described before uh, Office 365 E3, but you can also uh, disable uh, the copy directly, disable the copy on USB key or the capability to uh, attach just file on Gmail or Dropbox or whatever. If you have WIP, Windows Information Protection, or if you have Intune, those kind of features are part of EMF E3. Okay, so you need to have EMF E3, or you need to have, uh, if you're a small company, you can just have Microsoft 365 Business Premium to do so. Okay, and doing so, and if you set up properly um, all your desktops, you will be able to implement such, uh, such re restrictions. Okay, so a few words about the way the encryption of the file encryption works. In fact, it's based on right management system for the one who are from the on-premise world. In something we know from uh, Active Directory, because um, uh, a right management system, it's a whole feature, okay, uh, we use since years on, on the on-premise uh, uh, world. And it's based, uh, based on uh, RSA encryption. If you want to have a detailed explanation about all this work, I uh, just put you the link. And uh, I mean, you have quite <laughs> something like 40 minutes to read the whole article and to understand exactly how it works. It's quite interesting. I won't explain it in detail, but you have to understand it's quite, a, I mean, it's a really secure one. If you want to be able to, to crack uh, those, um, those protection, you need to have, I mean, like, uh, it's not even corporate uh, IT infrastructure. You need something like being a government uh, to be able to crack this kind of uh, of keys, like uh, if you are the NSA or something like that. And how do we create such a sensitive label? It's not as complex. You go on the compliance portal. So you need to be a global admin on your tenant. You go on the compliance portal, click on display one uh, hole. You have information protection. You click on labels, create new labels, and you have, I mean, uh, you, you will have a screen like this one in English. Sorry, my screenshot is in French. Uh, but you will be able to, in few clicks, to create a label. Okay. You create the label, and what you have to do after is to publish the label. You go exactly on the same screen, 
and you click on the um, labels policy tab, publish your label, and you can set up exactly what uh, you can set up exactly uh, where on which site collection the label will be visible, on which is it visible on the exchange or not, on Teams or not, and so on and so on. The first time you will do it, you will discover that it's quite long. In fact, why? Because I mean, it takes five minutes to set up, but it can take up to one or up to seven days to appear in Exchange and on uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and so on. So you set it up and you have to be very patient the first time because it can take up to seven days to appear. You will see those new buttons in Excel, Word, PowerPoint, and Outlook. Sometimes it's quite rapid, it's quite fast. It can take some, I mean, for me, it takes usually two days. Um, but it can take up to seven days. So be patient. It's not something that will appear immediately. So the first time you deploy something like that, um, you will see, if you go inside the menus, that uh, you can uh, uh, set up the label to appear only for the a security group, for a specific site collection and so on. So do test with uh, a specific um, user population like uh, IT, uh, a IT group or something like that the first time you do it. But it's quite easy to do. Okay, just you need the, the proper um, the, the proper uh, license to do so. What you can also do is to make that because I mean, it, if you do something like that, it means that your end user for every document, every confidential document, the end user has to click to say, okay, this is a confidential document. And if you're a banking company, for instance, um, I used to, to work for banking companies in uh, in past. Um, if you are a banking company, you want to be sure, for instance, that there is no IBAN number or uh, any banking information number uh, or passport number inside a document or inside an email or inside a team's conversations. Uh, so what you have, to, what you can do is to automatically detect uh, high band numbers, uh, everything that has a pattern. In fact, okay, it's something you can do. Okay, to do so, you go in the same information protection uh, menu on the compliance portal, and you set up uh, the. Uh, how to say it? Uh, in English, it's uh, create automatically apply. Okay, automatically apply and create a new strategy. And doing so, you can set up like regular expression or keywords, which if they appear inside the document, you will the document will be uh, will be automatically tagged with the proper label. Okay, so you can say, for instance, okay, every time I see an IBAN number inside uh, a document for those site collections. I shouldn't have such uh, an IBAN number here, or if there is one, okay, automatically Microsoft 365, no no action from the end user, Microsoft 365 will di directly tag the document as being confidential. Okay, this one, and uh, there are also options, uh, yeah, I was talking about that, but uh, if you want to use something like that, you need Office 365 E5, just before it was Office 365 E3. This one is only for Office 365 E5, okay? And uh, you can also use AA, uh, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, based on machine learning. If you want to do something like that, it's, it's in preview right now, but you can have something like that if you go on um, on the compliance portal and data uh, classification. You will have a menu, and right now it's more used for offensive language and so on. But you can create your own. You can train your own uh, machine learning. Your, you can train your own uh, in artificial intelligence. To do so, it's quite a workload, in fact, because you need to give the. Uh, uh, to the artificial intelligence, something like 500 documents. And the artificial intelligence will, will crunch everything, process everything, try to detect what is offensive or not, and so on. And then you have to give 
10,000 documents to test and to be sure it works properly. And if it works properly, uh, okay, you can deploy it. It's based on artificial intelligence. Right now, I know no company who will use this feature, okay, but it can exist. And if you want to use this feature, it's another license, which is called ML based classification of history 65. And it's only included if you use Microsoft 365 E5 compliance or if you use Microsoft 365 E5. Uh, quite an expensive license. I know no one will <laughs> really use uh, the last one. Okay, but um, if you want to play with that, yes, we can do something based on AE to do something like that. Okay, as far as I know, I can use uh, PowerShell to uh, apply those uh, those uh, labels, uh, but only on local files. So if you need you need to synchronize with your OneDrive and so on and so on. There is uh, nothing uh, on Power Automate, for instance, to set up uh, automatically a level, a sensitivity level, as far as I know. And right now, uh, we still don't have a feature to tag uh, uh, a document based on the folder or anything like that. Maybe something in the future. I hope so. Uh, it would be a good idea, I think. Um, accountability of data fiduciary. So, uh, no question by, by now. I mean, it's always strange to do those, uh, those presentation on remote because I don't have feedback. What is uh, sleeping? Okay, we have plenty of like So I continue. I know it's quite late in India. So, I mean, uh, I mean it's a Saturday. So thank you for being connected. I continue my presentation. So accountability of data. Um, so you need to be sure uh, about those. Uh, you need to be sure that you you're doing the proper actions in terms, for instance, of security when you're processing those data. So you need to be sure to secure those data. Okay. And when we talk about security in Office 365. There is something which is very important, which is not as enabled by default, and that you have absolutely to enable, according to my experience, according to Microsoft, according to many, many uh, security ITSEC uh, experts, you need to enable multi-factor authentication. When you're using something like Office 365, it means that if you just use a default setup, it means that anyone having your email address and knowing your password can connect from anywhere in the world. If I have brute force attacks, I mean, it's quite hard to do brute force attack on Office 365, but you can do spray attacks. Spray attacks means I will test, test the most famous uh, password and Every hacker now has a, a full list of uh, very famous passwords. You can do a spray attack to test a little bit. Every five minutes, you would test one account on your tenant. And uh, Microsoft won't be able to detect this kind of uh, automate. And you can use a job which will turn during days, weeks, months. I don't care I'm a hacker and uh, I can wait uh, very long. And if there is no MFA, I will by the end, it may take month, but I will uh, by the end uh, be able to crack one account. Okay. If your account is only protected by password or feedback on everyone on security will say that only using password for security is weak. It's a very bad idea. You need something else. Okay, and this is why we use MFA. MFA can be uh, a USB key you have on your computer. It can be uh, a message text you will receive on your mobile phone. It can be a vocal call on your mobile phone, or it can be an application you will have on your mobile phone. But it's something that if I'm a hacker, I don't know, somewhere in China, for instance, and I try to connect uh, on Russia or anywhere, Currently, I see hackers from everywhere in the world. Uh, I see attacks uh, from everywhere. Um, 
I, I mean, if I try to connect and if I break, if I crack your password, I don't have your mobile phone. Okay, so uh, for a hacker, no way. I need to steal your 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 mobile phone. Or I need to hack also your mobile phone. Every attacks, every uh, identity breach I have seen uh, from in my career on Office 365 are on accounts which only are protected on, by a password and more than a password. If you're protected by MFA, you will block something like 90% of attacks. Okay, there is a way to hack MFA, but uh, not the topic today, but uh, I mean, you will uh, increase uh, very, very, very high uh, your security if you use MFA. So if you have only one thing to do in security to protect those personal data, I mean, at enable MFA on all accounts on your company. Okay. What you have to do also, if you want to be sure, I mean, in, in, tomorrow you may be hacked. Okay. You may have someone who will enter on your tenant. So um, to be able to answer, because if you're hacked, okay, if someone uh, enter on your tenant, this, this hacker may have access to your personal data, which are stored on your tenant. But you're not sure about that. How to be sure about that? What you can do is to check the audit logs. But audit logs by default are not enabled. Okay, so uh, you have to enable it. It's just two clicks to do it. And uh, you go on, uh, on the Compliance Center Solutions Audit and you say, okay, enable uh, audit logs. And once you have done so, uh, for instance, um, in three in three weeks, you 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 will have someone who will enter illegally uh, in your tenant. You will be able to see exactly which file has been opened, which email has been uh, checked, afforded, deleted, and so on and so on. Okay, so the audit logs keep information during ninety days by default. If you have Office three sixty five E five users, which is quite an expensive license you can have up to 365 days audit logs, okay? And uh, it's not in the slides, but uh, you have connections logs, which are more detailed about from where, which IP address, which uh, location and so on. And those uh, uh, connection logs, which are on Azure ID, you will have only seven days of connection logs, except if you have uh, Azure IDP one. Azure DP1, you can have up to uh, 30 days, I think, of uh, connection logs. But the more important are the audit logs, because based on the audit logs, you can see exactly which information the hacker has opened, has downloaded, uh, has stolen. So doing so, you are able to say, OK, uh, did the hacker uh, stole um, personal or sensitive information or not? OK, and based on that, you are able to say to, uh, to the court, OK, we have been hacked, but there are, there are no uh, sensitive information stolen, no personal information stolen. OK, so. And uh, if you want to go further on security, you have plenty of presentation. I think there is Michael Noel and uh, many other uh, people who presented this, but you have something called Microsoft Enterprise Security and Mobility. EMS, which is part of uh, Microsoft 365 licenses for enterprise, enterprise, and uh, you will see plenty of uh, tools, ATP, uh, Azure IDP one, uh, cloud monitoring, and so on. And those features are just listed here. You have Intune for uh, mobile device management. Uh, you have plenty of advanced feature to enhance the security of your tenant. Why? Because managing compliance means also managing security. Security and compliance are now uh, totally linked. Okay, so uh, be careful about that and uh, check that every, everything goes, uh, goes fine on this side. Uh, I need to go a little bit uh, faster uh, because I'm quite late on my planning, uh, but uh, I talk too much, sorry about that. Um, what are we talking about? Um, I mean, the last restriction you have to do is to uh, ensure that do, you don't keep data more than you should keep them. So you are supposed to keep the data, the personal data, for instance, only the time 
uh, you, are, you need them, okay? And this is typically what you have detailed on uh, when you get the, the consent from your end users. So uh, what you will uh, have to do is to use retention labels, okay? And those retention labels are like sensitive labels, but it's not exactly the same, it's different labels. And sensitive labels and retention labels are what we called in Microsoft uh, the unified labels. It's quite a shortcut, but uh, if you ask something like that in mind, uh, it's not uh, very idea. Okay, and uh, for instance, you can create those labels. It's nearly the same way than the sensitivity letter labels. Just it's not the same place in the user interface. And doing so, you will be able to say, okay, this is personal data, and because it's personal data, the retention period is, for instance, you will have a formula. It's the last modification, plus seven years, for instance. Okay, and after those seven years, automatically the data will be deleted. Okay. I said seven years because this is typically what I use in UK. I don't know what is uh, the usual retention period in India, So, but you can set it up. Uh, it's really easy to set up. And those retention levels, so as, as I said, you need to have uh, Office 365 uh, A3 license at a minimum. To do so, and you can have those retention levels based on exchange folder, or you can have a default retention level on a SharePoint document library. So it's not the same way to, to set it up on, um, uh, it's different from sensitivity, uh, sensitivity levels. If you want to set it up on your tenant, you need to go on the compliance portal as a, tenant, uh, as a, as a global admin. You go on classification, solution, records management, file plan, create a label. It's nearly the same kind of user interface. Just, I mean, those are not exactly the same question. You see the kind of formula you will be able to set up. You click on next, next, next. And then you need to publish those labels, exactly like for sensitivity labels. And it can take up to seven days to appear properly on the user interface. So be careful about that the first time. It's normal if it doesn't appear, just wait seven days and it will be okay. And uh, I don't detail it because I don't have the time for that, but uh, you can set up some search formula and so on to be able to automatically tag document based on uh, a search request, for instance. You can use uh, the search engine, which you cannot use for sensitivity labels. So quite tricky uh, on labels on Microsoft uh, Word. And uh, last topic I will uh, talk about uh, uh, do, 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 uh, as an obligation for the company. You may, uh, your end user may request you uh, an export or an update or to delete all the personal data you have about them. Okay, and to do something like that, you you a end user or a, a client. Uh, I mean, a customer contact you and say, okay, I want you to delete everything you know about me. And uh, <clears throat> on GDPR, and I think on PDPB, it's exactly the same. You need to obey uh, at this kind of order, except if you have, uh, how to say it in English, uh, if we have a legitimate region to keep those data. But if you, for instance, you had a customer and you stopped doing business with this customer, and you have no ongoing contract and you have never had a contract, in fact, or if you, for instance, recruiting someone uh, during the recruitment process, you have the curriculum vitae uh, of, the, of someone, you need to keep those data, okay, but uh, you shouldn't keep them more than expected. And uh, if someone contacts you and say, okay, I need you to delete everything you have about me, if you want to be sure about that, you have a feature. Um, a few years ago, we were using the e-discovery feature. Right now, we are using uh, data subject request. So if you go on the compliance portal, you will see data subject request, create a new ca case. We will be able to search doing so and uh, on every mailboxes, every SharePoint uh, uh, site collection, every Teams, every OneDrive and so on and so on. It will use a search engine and it will totally ignore the permissions you have set up. So in fact, by default, even a global admin doesn't have access to 
to the uh, data subject request feature. You need to have a specific role. So, I mean, you need to monitor carefully this role uh, in Office 365. And if you have this role, you will be able to create such a case. And you will do your, uh, your search and you will be able to export everything. So you will have a CSV file listing every content. So doing so, you will be able to delete those content. But my advice is always check the content before deleting because you may have personal data about one customer, but it also may it may also concern personal data about someone else. I mean, if we talk about documents, for instance. So uh, we be very careful before deleting anything. And there is no delete button for this reason. And if you want to, uh, if someone requests you an export, I mean, you can have doing so uh, directly uh, a zip export, so fine. But once again, be very careful about that because uh, before forwarding the zip to the one who requested you the export, you need to, del to delete all the data you have about other customers, for instance. So, I mean, Microsoft did uh, everything they, uh, they could to, uh, to help you to collect everything with every information you have someone specifically. But uh, you still have some manual process to do uh, before you forward the, those information. And the uh, last one is about the data location. A uh, few information about the data location because when we talk about compliance, uh, I know that by default, uh, India is expecting the data to be stored in India. So, and if you are a multinational, uh, it can be quite an edge. So, uh, by default, I mean, data are stored on a single uh, region. And you see here a map of all those regions available uh, in, uh, in Office 365, in Azure, in fact. And as you see in India, you have several regions. Okay, so when you create your tenant, you're on a single region. And by default, all your data, all your data are supposed to be in this specific region. Okay. So, uh, and you will have an additional uh, region uh, for Central India. This is, this, um, this is what Microsoft sells you. I mean, this is a theory. What you have to do to know is that if you are a, a big company, international company, uh, if you are more than uh, 500 users, and if you are ready to pay more than $2 per user per month additional, you will be able to set up exactly to say as an IT admin, you will have a commercial commands to do so. You will be able, you will be able, will be able to move uh, your hand user mailboxes on a different uh, data center. You'll be able to move mailboxes or SharePoint site collections. Okay, so you will be able to say, okay, this site collection is in this data center. This mailbox is on this data center. This OneDrive, because a OneDrive is a SharePoint site collection, is on this specific uh, data center. And if, for instance, a big bank, uh, a big banking company, you will typically ask request to have uh, all the information for US and user on the US, everything for India and in India, everything for Europe in Europe. It's classical. Okay, so if you want to do something like that, check multi-geo capability. You need to have at least 500 uh, seats and it will cost you two additional dollars per user per month. Okay, but this is the theory. If you check, if you go on your tenant administration, in, if you want to be sure, if you uh, go on a, uh, on a new uh, Office 365 tenant, go on tenant administration, settings, organization profile, and we'll show you exactly what region is supposed to, to store, uh, what uh, Office 365 region is, suppo is supposed to store your documents and emails and so on. But once again, this is theory. And I give you two PowerShell comments here. You will have the slides. Uh, I will share the slides on the on the um, social networks after. But um, if you type those comments, you will see the exact list of servers which are used on your tenant. And you will see that few services 
are still stored in North America. NA state for, stands for North America. So uh, this is for uh, a Malaysian uh, tenant because I don't have Indian tenant. I requested one, but uh, I had a bag. I don't know why it's still in uh, all in North America. But uh, if you check, uh, even if Microsoft say, okay, it's all in uh, India. If you look at the documentation and the detailed documentation is here on this link, you will see that, for instance, Intune is more in Asia Pacific and Sway and Yammer are still uh, stored in the uh, United States. So be careful about that. F same for forms, for instance. OK, so more in the most important exchange SharePoint can be in India. But uh, you check for every services and you will see that few services are stored in US. And if you want to double check, type those commands and you will see the name of the server. And when you see NA, it means that it's in North America. OK, and uh, for the conclusion, uh, I will skip the last few slides because I want to have at least five minutes for the questions. But uh, uh, just be sure, I mean, if you have any question about uh, any norms and compliance and so on, you have this URL. Here you can find every documentation. I've seen that there are a few uh, Indian norms which uh, Office 365 is compliant with. And uh, in my European point of view, um, Microsoft Services is by far the one who is compliant with uh, the, the, the biggest number of, uh, of norms. Um, so all those norms Microsoft 365 is compliant with are listed in uh, this portal. You see a capture here, there is quite a number, and it's compliant with RBI, ERDIA, uh, METI, which are uh, for insurance, banking, or government guidelines from India. And in this portal, you will see uh, the official certificates. You can get the uh, external audit, pen test, documentation, and so on. Everything is listed here. Okay. And uh, and in fact, is in, just to conclude, if you have any, any question about uh, uh, Cloud Act, or Patriot Act and so on, uh, check uh, the Compliance Center and uh, somewhere you will find uh, the, um, a report. There is a report uh, showing exactly for every country the number of requests they receive from uh, uh, government and so on, and um, or just Discord. And you will see the exact number for India. And this is the last one we have for India. You see that they have received uh, something like 600 requests from Justice Court or any government, can be US or Indian or government. And you can see that half the requests are directly rejected by uh, Microsoft uh, legal department because they can re uh, reject it. And a uh, few ones, in fact, when they do the request, they find no data. And uh, when they send re data to court or to, uh, to a government uh, agency, in fact, it's only uh, non-content data. It means metadata. It means, for instance, the title and uh, the recipient of the email, but they don't send the, the content of the email. Okay, there is no content by now uh, sent uh, to a government or to a justice court uh, on the Microsoft uh, on on anything anything you you stored on Microsoft Cloud Service. Do you have any question? It was quite a dense one. Uh, it was quite dense. Everybody is sleeping? No question? Yeah, if anyone is having any questions, please unmute and you can ask. Yeah. Yeah, there was a question earlier. I don't know it was answered about the template for disclaimer text. Yes. Uh, we had a question about that. Uh, has anybody a good template version to start from for the disclaimer text or contents? Uh, so this one, in fact, you I mean, in terms of disclaimer, talk with your legal department. So we'll, uh, um, so we'll, give you one. 
I mean, really depend on the country and so on. So, I mean, you really need to talk with your legal department about the 